Subchapter 4.3 Interested Parties and Internal External Issues In this chapter, we will get familiar with the way the standard requires us to do our context analysis. To be specific, we will learn how to use the following terms properly Interested Parties, Internal External Issues. Let's start with the main character in this story your company. The basic concept is that no company is an island because it has to deal with many different parties and trends to work correctly and safely. Everything that surrounds it is called context, and the standard requires us to map it. Is there a specific way in which the standard wants us to map the context of the organization? The answer is yes, kind of. So we could start from our company again, and this time we could define the context in the way the standard asks us to do. The standard wants us to think this way. Firstly, your company could be influenced by other parties. You could see these parties as entities of their own with their needs and expectations. These needs and expectations make them be somehow interested in how your company is doing. That's why the standard calls them interested parties. The most common interested parties are listed here. Workers, trade unions, owners, suppliers, clients, competitors. There may be many more. The other things your company could be influenced by are the internal and external issues. These are less simple to explain. This family is made of all the things that could influence the way your company deals with OHS, but are not entities of their own. They are rather concepts, global trends, etc. Before going onward, please focus on the two arrows between your company and the interested parties, and on the two arrows between your company and the internal and external issues. They symbolize the mutual influence between your company and its context, just like we saw a few slides back. 